Welcome to this third video in the three video series on our oceans. I'm Aida Awad from Broward College. This video is on the human impacts on the oceans. The learning targets for this video include interpreting the impact of pollution, global warming, overfishing, and other human activities on the marine environment and to suggest possible solutions. Also assessing the following areas of human impact on the world's oceans. Marine pollution, fishing, shipping, ocean dumping and plastic debris, coastal development, coral reefs, offshore extraction, and climate change impacts. We'll start out with thinking broadly about marine pollution and deteriorating habitats. In the picture on the left here, you can see the carcass of a whale that has been beached along a shoreline in the Philippines. And as that carcass began to decay, you'll notice that it has been eating lots of human left behind garbage in the ocean. Very sad. And in the picture on the right, you can see boons that are out trying to trap oil that's floated to the surface from some sort of accident in the ocean. So there's a paradox here. The ocean provides us with food, but it's used as a dumping ground. And the pollution there increasingly threatens the world's fisheries. In fact, 80% of ocean pollution come from human land-based activities. Some statistics about fisheries. Fisheries are a very valuable food resource. 90% of the world's catch in fisheries is fish. Only 6% are mollusks like clams, oysters, squids, octopus. 3% are crustaceans, so crabs, shrimps, and lobster, and about 1% is algae. Our fish harvest has increased dramatically over time. In 1950, we were only harvesting about 19 million tons from the seas, 2000, about 95 million tons, and 2012, 91 million tons, so a slight decline possibly due to fish farming. Problems and challenges for our world's fisheries. In fact, no particular country has legal claim to the open oceans. At least 30% of the world's fish stocks are overexploited, and 57% are fully exploited. There have been significant technological advances in fishing that allow fishers to remove all fish from a particular area, which includes bycatch. Bycatch being anything else that's caught in those nets. So it could be sea turtles, it could be dolphins, marine mammals, anything that's caught unintentionally. Bycatch exceeds seven and a half million tons annually. Overharvesting threatens other marine species in the food web. Some progress is being made though. Some nations have extended their limits of jurisdiction to 200 miles offshore from 100 to prevent overharvesting. And as of 2014, an all-time low of 16% of the 469 U.S. fish stocks were overfished, and 46 stocks were under rebuilding plans. There are also plans to reduce bycatch. Aquaculture is relatively new and may be helping to subsidize the fishing trade. So aquaculture can be either fresh or marine water fish farms. Developing nations now produce more seafood from aquaculture than they harvest from the oceans. That's a good sign. The limit to harvest size is the available area for farming, but fish farms have very dense populations, as you can see from the tank in the bottom picture here and the top picture here. They can produce significant volumes of polluting wastes, and they may contribute to reduced genetic diversity in wild fish populations. Turning our attention to shipping, ocean dumping, and plastic debris. Ships dump oily ballast and waste, as you see in the top center picture. Combating that is the United Nations International Mar Maritime Organization, and it bans marine pollution from the shipping industry and seeks to reduce the ship's greenhouse gas emissions. In 1991, the United States instituted the Ocean Dumping Ban, which bans ocean dumping of sewage and waste. We know that plastic waste is a problem, it doesn't degrade. In fact, it breaks into small pieces, which are found in the Eastern Pacific garbage patch. So in the top left picture, you can see the dash here in the center of this current gyre that is the Eastern Pacific garbage patch. In this region, 
very small pieces of plastic. We're not talking about whole plastic jugs or plastic bags here. We're talking about small pieces, several millimeters in size. And these pieces can entangle marine mammals and birds. Filter feeders ingest these, and they can die of starvation as a result. Coastal development also threatens our oceans by altering or destroying the coastal ecosystems, such as mangroves, salt marshes, seagrass beds, and coral reefs. Coastal areas are overdeveloped, they're highly polluted, and they're often overfished. Coastal management plans are inadequate. The biggest problem here is human population size. 60% of the world's population currently lives within 150 kilometers of a coastline, and that's expected to increase to 75% by the year 2025. And you can see the impact here in the top picture there's a steam shovel actually dredging out this area, which is destroying a mangrove. In the middle picture, you see the sign that indicates that there's contaminated water. And in the bottom picture, you can see the outflow from uh, an area near Florida, West Palm Beach, Florida, where there is outflow that's obviously different than the ocean. Human impacts on coral reefs. These are more than just dragging an anchor across a coral reef and ripping it up physically, as you see in the top picture. In fact, silt washing downstream from clear-cut forests suffocates coral reefs. Increased ocean temperatures cause coral bleaching, which stresses the corals, which then expel the coral polyps. Overfishing leads to an unbalanced food web and pollution from ocean dumping and coastal pollution can impact coral reefs. Climate change, sea level rise, and warmer oceans are problems in different areas of the world. So climate change is increasing ocean temperatures causing sea level rise. And sea level rise is not only caused by the melting of ice, but it's caused by the inflation of seawater as the temperature of that ocean water increases. It causes coastal flooding, which causes wetlands loss and saltwater intrusion. In the top picture, you can see changes in sea surface temperatures. So you'll notice that zero change is the division between the blue and the cream color here. And the only place on the map that I see blue is at the southern tip of Greenland. And this would be as a result of glacial meltwater flowing into the North Atlantic from ice melting on Greenland. Other places around the globe have a positive change in sea surface temperature, an increase in sea surface temperatures, anywhere from zero degrees all the way up to the very darkest bands of color that we see in some areas off the southeastern coast of South America, off the southwestern coast of Africa, and those are three and a half to four degrees Fahrenheit changes in sea surface temperatures. The bottom diagram shows us global sea surface temperatures over time from 1880 to 2015. So the dashed line here is the average from 1971 to 2000. And you can see that since the year about 1980, there has been a above average temperature anomaly in sea surface temperatures globally. And review our learning targets. Interpreting the impact of pollution, global warming, overfishing, and other human activities on the marine environment and suggesting possible solutions. And assessing the human impact on various locations in the world's oceans. I think you can head off and take your mastery check quiz and I'll see you in class.